Hi there, Nicholas Kevin here from First Formations, the UK's leading company formation agent. Welcome to another episode of Whiteboard Thursday, where we provide a wide range of advice on business and company matters. If you find this video useful, please like it and share it with your friends and colleagues. If you want to see more, please subscribe to our channel. Okay, let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about negative customer reviews and how to deal with them. The world of customer reviews can be a blessing for small businesses. That is, if they are handled properly. If not, they can become something of a marketing disaster. This is something many business owners have discovered the hard way with poorly judged responses to negative customer reviews. So make sure you learn from their mistakes by handling poor feedback in a professional and courteous manner. But first of all, let's just discuss what not to do with negative customer reviews. Now, number one, do not try to get them removed. On receiving a poor review, some business owners will contact the review platform and try to get it removed, citing various reasons. For example, offensive language, uh, if not being factual, or disputing that it is a genuine review from an actual customer. The truth is, every business receives poor customer feedback at some point or another, and most people Looking at a company's reviews will probably start with the one-star reviews. Now, why? Well, because people want to see how the company handled them. Did they use good levels of grace and diplomacy and show empathy and understanding in their response? Or were they defensive, dismissive, or even confrontational? Handling a poor review properly will always work to your advantage by showing that you care, have a good customer aftercare policy, and a business improvement strategy. So don't waste your time trying to remove negative customer reviews. Instead, show the customer and everybody else that you are a caring company with the capacity and the willingness to do the right thing. Number two, do not ignore them. It is vitally important that all customer reviews receive an online response. Yes, all reviews should receive response, not just the negative ones. If a customer takes the time to provide positive feedback, the business needs to show a good level of gratitude by acknowledging and thanking the customer. Similarly, by not posting an online response to a negative customer review, you are showing your customer and the world that you do not care about customer service, or your business is very, in a very poor state where it simply does not get involved in resolving customer issues. Also, a disappointed customer should receive an offline response from the business to try and resolve the situation to their satisfaction. Not trying to turn a bad experience around is a cardinal sin of the world of customer service excellence. And number three, do not argue with the customer. Any business owner knows that the customer is not always right, but they should always be allowed to feel that they are. The golden rule when dealing with negative customer reviews is to never blame the customer. You should accept that they have had a bad experience, apologize, and strive to rectify the situation while ensuring it doesn't happen again. Simple, right? You would think so, but some people tend to get very defensive when someone insults their business. For example, a Glasgow hostel owner went viral after he did absolutely everything wrong when responding to a negative customer review that was posted on TripAdvisor. The owner made several spectacular errors of judgment, disputing almost every claim made in the review and calling the author some pretty unpleasant names. Numerous stories detailing his horrific approach to customer service now populate the first page of search results for his company. Not so clever at all. It is therefore important to always remain calm and in control of your emotions, no matter how badly your conversations with the customer go. Do not get sucked into an argument, which can all too quickly turn into an ugly and irretrievable affair. Okay, so now that we've had a look at some of the do nots, let's have a look at some of the do's. And number one, do respond properly. As soon as you receive a negative review, publish a holding response, letting the customer and everybody else reading the review know that you are very concerned with the poor level of service reported. Explain you will be conducting an investigation as soon as possible and you will report back to the customer directly by email to resolve the situation to their satisfaction. Also, contact the customer 
by email to repeat this message and open up a line of communication, which you will need later in the process. Number two, carry out an investigation. Turning around a poor review is in many ways like solving a murder. If you don't manage it within the first 24 hours, the chances are it will remain unresolved. So it is really important to set the wheels of investigation in motion as quickly as possible before the customer loses patience and refuses to deal with you. Number three, take the matter offline. It is important that you carry through with your promise to contact the customer directly, either by telephone or by email, immediately after concluding your investigation to resolve the matter. If relevant, explain to the customer what went wrong within your organization in this instance. Let them know the steps you are putting in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. For example, retraining a member of staff or changing an order fulfillment process. You will find most reviews are caused by misunderstandings or poor communications, and they can be easily turned around with personal contact. So approach this task with a positive attitude and have faith in your customer's ability to be reasonable and understanding if treated properly. Next up on number four, be polite at all times. It goes without saying, you should never become emotionally involved, no matter how testing the situation becomes. Always remember to thank the customer for choosing your business and apologize for any inconvenience caused by this poor experience. And most importantly, remain calm, composed, and in full control of your emotions. Once you allow yourself to be drawn into an argument, you will find the situation very difficult to retrieve. Finally, number five, always publish a final online response. After you have closed the matter with the customer, hopefully with a positive outcome, you should replace your temporary holding response with a final response to the negative customer review. The final online response should confirm an investigation was carried out, the customer was contacted promptly, the company made every effort to resolve the situation to the customer's satisfaction, the outcome of the matter, whether it be positive or negative, and an apology for any inconvenience caused to the customer. Always remember, if the customer is found to be at fault and the complaint is non-meritorious, never point the finger of blame at the customer, especially in the online response. Always be gracious and diplomatic. Most people reading the review and the company's response will be able to discern what actually transpired without you having to spell it out. Now let's talk about some of the things you can put in place to improve your company's performance in handling negative feedback. And the first, I'd recommend setting up customer review alerts or monitoring your review platforms. Before you can respond to customer reviews, you need to know that you are receiving them, right? Many review platforms allow you to set up email or text alerts when a new review is posted. However, some platforms do not provide this functionality, and so it is important that someone in your company is assigned to the task of monitoring your review uh, platforms and responding to all reviews in a punctual manner. Your online reputation is critical. Therefore, you must be aware of all customer reviews and publish an online response to each one. Secondly, it is vital that you see the value of the occasional negative customer review. Why? Well, because negative reviews add authenticity to your customer's review profile. Think of it like this. If every review was glowing, five-star recommendations of your services or products, your reviews would tend to look fabricated and somewhat unbelievable. The irony is negative customer reviews can help a company build trust by validating the positive reviews. Also, as mentioned earlier, customers want to see a company handling negative reviews. So always remember to use them to your advantage. And finally, create a policy where you share all of your customer reviews with your team. This will let them know how they are performing from a customer service point of view. You will find that your team will usually respond in a constructive and helpful way if they are kept in the loop. Taking this concept a step further, you can create a business improvement initiative by analyzing the customer review data. 
This will identify trends and recur uh, recurring causes of complaints in your business, giving you the opportunity to work on those areas. Now, as with many things in life, there are alternative ways of dealing with matters. And here is one. Some businesses take a different approach by making light of negative customer reviews and using humor to generate entertainment value. Now, please note this tactic is not suited to all lines of business. And so make sure your regular customers will appreciate the joke before choosing this path. For example, some restaurants decide to display negative reviews on a board outside their front door, essentially challenging people to come in and try it out. Their good humor about the situation gets them plenty of, of attention online and is usually worth its weight in free marketing buzz. Meanwhile, the Michelin-starred Longman and Eagle restaurant in Chicago has even printed their favorite negative review quotes on stylish cards to raise a chuckle among customers. Again, it helped get them noticed online. There is even a restaurant that received mountains of buzz online by actively striving to become the worst reviewed restaurant on Yelp. The owner of the Botto Bistro is so confident of the quality of his food, he thinks online reviews ultimately will not damage his restaurant. And so far it seems to be working. So there you have it. Remember, no company is perfect. Negative customer reviews are inevitable at some point, even if you do everything right. Indeed, it's important not to lose sight of the fact that there are ways of making these blots on your otherwise perfect review ratings work for you. As long as you are working hard on achieving customer service excellence and you have a good customer-centric policy in place, you should be okay. If you have any questions about what we've covered, please ask in the comments section below and we'll get straight back to you. In the meantime, be sure to subscribe to our channel to get more tips and advice on limited companies, reporting requirements, tax obligations and more. We're always happy to help and we can't wait to hear from you. Until next time, cheerio.